Okay, welcome to this Q&A session on the Method of Moments uh, toolbox. Are there already any questions I can try to answer? Yes, I have a question, please. Uh, uh, can you show us in the example how to display uh, uh, the impulse response function with the method of moment command, please? Um, Yes, this was the, the file I used, right? Um, let's call this GMM order two file. After you've done the estimation, mm -hmm. or I mean, let's simply do this again. Okay, you get those plots and all right. Okay. And the estimated param parameters are these guys over here. Let me copy this quickly over just for reference. And they will be updated. Okay, so if you have a look into M underscore params, I think they will exactly correspond to the estimate here. So mm -hmm. this means whatever you do after the estimation uh, will be based on the estimated parameters. So if you want to do impulse response functions, you simply go ahead and write stock Zemo order equals to pruning. And you should be good to go. Yeah, they, there they are. Uh, okay, okay, I see. <laughs> I see. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's excellent. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. This is Thank the you same very, when you, basically the same when you call the Bayesian estimation or the maximum likelihood estimation command, uh, just estimation. Um, afterwards, you can then do, say, for instance, impulse response functions or uh, other stuff. The structures should be all updated to the current estimated value. Okay, 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 okay. I see, I see. So it takes the last estimate that was done by the previous command and do all the thing according to this command. Yes. Um, I mean, say you've run a very, very long estimation. Okay, let's assume it took a week or so, then mm -hmm you can always reload the estimation results by reloading this MUT file. Okay, if you load this, so see my workspace was empty, now it's, and all the estimation results are in this structure MOM, method of moments. Okay, here mm -hmm. you have the data moments, um, the uh, Cholesky decomposition of the weighting matrix, um, the current model moments, the, um, moments distance and oh I reloaded the simulated method of moments um, file here and this those are basically your parameter values at the first stage those are your parameter values at the second stage those are the standard errors so you can then access them um, so there you go parameters and then those are the values Okay, okay, okay. I see. It's excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you sure. very much, Professor. Sure, sure. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. This is a new. This is a new toolbox, so please uh, accept that some some glitches. There, there will be errors, and please let us know of those. If you run into any issues, um, please let us know in the in the forum so we can have a look, um, because uh, this is uh, yeah, this is a new toolbox. I have a okay, question. Okay. Okay. Yes, please go ahead. Um, um, like like in the command the window now, if I for, forgot to add the um the command that is starting any kind of toolbox 
can I run it after the the, the, the estimation? Ah, okay. So say you you run the estimation, but you then want to do impulse response functions. Is that your your question? No, 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 no not not in yeah yeah. Impulse response function is one of the the, the thing that I want to do. But what what about identification uh, as well as the method of moment? Can can that be conducted after I run the first uh, MOD file? Um, yes and no. Um, for identification, you really need to put in the identification command because the preprocessor needs to compute additional object objects that will not be computed by default. It depends on the command you want to run afterwards because uh, the preprocessor, like all those, this folder here with this plus sign contains uh, the deri uh, dynamic derivatives, static derivatives, and derivatives with respect to parameters that we need, for instance, for identification. So um, identification is maybe not a good thing to to run afterwards. the The underlying function is actually dynamic identification. Okay, uh -huh. so this is the function we run. Uh, I mean, this is all open source. You, this is well, you can have a look at what we do here, but it does require. Um, objects that are done by the preprocessor. This is not MATLAB. This is then C++ code. So this needs to be uh, needs to run prior to this. Um, impulse response functions are different because um, they don't require additional objects that are not computed uh, with uh, with what we already do when estimation uh, when we estimate the model. And um, you can have a look at the driver file. I mean, this is now for power users basically. Okay, so after pre-processing your model, um, Dynair creates this driver file. So there will be a plus folder with the name of your mode file and this driver file. And this is the actual MATLAB code we run. Okay, and so say if I simply rerun this whole file, I will get the exact same output. So this is the command that is MATLAB code to run your stockzimal command. Okay, stockzimal is actually a command for the preprocessor, but this is the MATLAB command. This looks like this then. So the, again, this is maybe something not out of the box. Um, if you know what you're doing, this can be done, but um, by default, it is um, advised to actually run this all in one mode file or in several mode files where you use this, like I was doing, right? I have an ink file or whatever it's called where I contain all my model equations, and then I'm creating other mode files for, say, steady state computations for estimation purposes or for um, impulse response analysis. So this is what we call modularization, which is very handy and useful. OK, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I have a question, please, if uh, there is an no, hold on. Uh, uh, in page 29 in the slide, uh, you mentioned the, mid, the matched moment uh, block. Uh, is it possible to add, uh, in addition to the lag, the lead of the variable? Um, eventually, yes. I'm not sure whether we don't allow it right now. So let's, I think we do actually. So this is. Let's try. I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a while since we, we programmed that. Um, no, leads uh, are not supported for GMM. I think for SMM, they are supported. Because for, for um, we, we actually have a couple of feasibility checks. OK, so um, in a sense, if you would enter stuff like this, right, or this is all the same moment, unconditionally seen. Okay, so this is all the first autocovariance of consumption, and there are in the code mm -hmm. there are some some feasibility checks to remove those redundant moments, and the the, the co in the console it should tell you that some moments were removed, maybe. Oh, well, we have a lead or lag. Okay, no, we are, we are actually very very strict right now for now. Um, 
like looking looking forward um, at some point in the future, maybe with Dynair 4.8, you will be also to declare stuff like this. Okay, so let me compute the unconditional moment of the lo log of this variable. For now, you really have to, the first variable is not allowed to have any lead or lag, um, and the other one is only allowed to have um, lags for now. This will change at some time in the future, but not today, not for the first iteration of this, um, this toolbox. But that's a very good question. Thank you. We should okay. uh, make this, we will make this uh, clear in the, in the manual. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Uh, I mean, you mentioned the, the flow information method, the, the like oh. patient MCMC yep. information. Um, how, how can I know that I misspecified the model from Denair? Is there any way to do that? Um, well, the, 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 the point I wanted to make is that when we estimate with a full estimation method, so those maximum likelihood method or the Bayesian um, MCMC methods, then we really assume that we know the complete distribution. Okay, so this is by itself, in a sense, misspecified because the true data generating process is most likely not our true, our model that we consider here. Um, so every model has some issue with misspecification. And there are, um, there are papers uh, that, that deal with this issue that try to analyze this in a more um, or a structured way. Um, and this is, I think, still uh, a topic in the literature that is not that has not no definite answer. What we do when we when we become basically Bayesians, we add additional information to our model. So we are, in a sense, uh, taking care of this problem by be becoming Bayesians. Maybe okay. I have my model, and this model really focuses, say, on the dynamics of the labor market. But I'm missing maybe uh, the dynamics of the rest of the world or the exports and imports uh, side of, of stuff. Um, I have a, I don't know, a reduced form model for this in my model. And I'm uh, even including then some priors to get more information um, to penalize uh, the, the estimation in that way. And here with the method of moments toolbox um, or with the, with the method of moments estimation, this is a bit different because you're not really considering the whole distribution of your data, but you're really focusing only on on uh, some moments, so you want to uh, you want to focus uh, long run averages. You want to focus on the variances, the second moments, or um, you're interested in uh, in risk. Then uh, you would look at the skewness. Um, so it's um, or in in theory, the method of moments is uh, uh, doesn't suffer so much from this misspecification bias, but um, the it can uh, it can as well it all depends which moments you consider okay so in theoretical sense there there is this conceptual issues about misspecifications with full information methods we really assume the whole distribution so in a sense we do think that we know the true data generating process with those limited information methods uh, we don't do this the downside is those full information methods in small sample sizes often perform better than uh, the method of moments. Uh, what do I mean by better? Uh, you get um, more efficient estimates because the estimation is based on the full distribution. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I have a question, please, Professor. Uh, just to be sure, uh, because the toolbox in, is new, I want to be sure. Uh, in the uh, uh, in the matched moment block, we only include the, the moment of the observed variable. Exactly. That is correct. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we try to be close to what we do with the estimation command. So, and if I remember correctly, you will, if you forgot, for instance, to include consumption, and you didn't declare it as a observable variable, you should get an error. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Yes, variables in row one need to be declared, and then you have a look at the matched moments block. 
ah, okay, I need to declare this variable. Strictly speaking, this is not this is not necessary a necessary thing to do, but we we sort of have those two two toolboxes for uh, full information estimation and this limited this new limited information toolbox, and we want these to be similar to each other as much as possible. Okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I have another question. If there is no no other question, please. Sorry for uh, monopolizing the line. Uh, sorry. No, that's great. That's sorry. great. You you raise good issue, uh, good questions. Here. Go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the penalized method of moment, and uh, how, and uh, you in the slide you mentioned that you have to introduce some prior. I don't know if you have an example to show us. If you have uh, by any chance an example, please. Yes, um, let me, oh yeah, that is uh, exactly here I used, um, if you want to do this penalized estimation, then you need, uh, as you were saying, to um, declare the full prior. Here I'm using basically only initial values for my optimization, similar to what we would do in maximum likelihood. Um, let me quickly give you another example. Okay, here I would declare like the a prior distribution. Okay, I've declared uh, for some parameters the prior distribution very similar to what you would do when you do Bayesian estimation. And mm -hmm. with the method of moments command, you would then need to pass the penalized estimator option. If you want to use uh, this approach of including the prior mean as additional restriction and weigh this with the um, prior precision matrix. And then, no, you do, you will get um, an idea of your priors, right? So this is the priors I've chosen and I do see a message here. Initial values are outside the parameter bounds for eta L and theta. Okay. I need to check these priors. So, but just for presentation issues, let's then remove these from estimation. And this is then doing the penalized estimation. And you can see that uh, the penalized estimation has, well, in this case, for this model, probably a, a bit higher objective function or usually it does have a higher objective uh, or value of the objective function, but the parameters you get might be more plausible. This is, uh, I guess, also the, the same problem with maximum likelihood that, you, that you, you get into regions that are, from economically speaking, implausible. Uh, another reason why we, are, we become Bayesians uh, using priors there, we can um, put more weight on more plausible, economically more plausible regions. And this should tell you that it has done, where is it there? Penalized estimation using deviation from prior mean and weighted with the prior precision. Okay, and if I don't do penalized, I can also declare prior distributions and then don't do penalized estimations then it's simply going to use this as an, the prime mean as initial value, I think. But it, or is it? I don't know. Or do we? No, we actually also do penalized estimation. So I guess the option is triggered. Oh yeah, priors were specified, but the penalized estimator option was not set. We set it automatically to one. Okay, okay. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. All right. I guess that's it. Um, I think the, the, there's another session coming up soon on another new toolbox for occasionally binding constraints or for estimating models with occasionally binding constraints. All right. So feel um, please feel free to, to play around with this toolbox uh, using um, different models, definitely. Let us know if you run into any uh, issues, if you don't like the interface, or if you find it strange that uh, some options are automatically set or are not automatically set. 
um, just let us know what you think. We're open to suggestions. The, the NAS forum is a good uh, opportunity to do so.